Hello and welcome again to Gaming Gatehouse and into this playthrough of Mass Effect 2. So this will be the first addendum. Uh, we will separate this playthrough in several categories. The main story will be divided by chapters. Addendums will be dedicated to uh, talking with the crew, with the squad members, um, the co le learning more about the codex. All will be um, specifically kept separated, stored, shelves, proper shelves. So we will speak with the new crew, crew members. Starting with Joker. Can you believe this, Commander? It's my baby! Better than new! It fits me like a glove! And leather seats! Military may set the hardware standard, but on a first-gen frigate, they could care less if the seats breathe. Civilian sector comfort by design. The reproduction is not intended to be perfect, Mr. Moreau. Seamless improvements were made. And there's the downside. I liked the Normandy when she was beautiful and quiet. Now she's got this thing I don't want to talk about. It's like ship cancer. It's not the same, Joker. There's nothing here that was even part of the real Normandy. There's us. I have to take what I can get. The last two years sucked. You'll see. Even if an AI is spying on us, no way they'll invest this much just to screw us over. It'll be better than the old days. I hope so. I died. Yeah, you are such a downer. <laughs> I hope so. I died. Okay, let's learn about Edie. Yes, Shepard. I want to know more about you. Do you have a specific inquiry? How are you getting along with Joker? Mr. Moreau does not trust me. It offends him that I am installed aboard his ship's computers. Yeah, the last Normandy did just fine without an AI reminding me the airlock is ajar. Why are you named Edie? Edie is the phonetic pronunciation of E-D-I. That is an acronym for Enhanced Defense Intelligence. Where are you? My core intelligence is housed in a quantum blue box located behind the medical bay. What do you do aboard the ship? I operate the ship's electronic and cyber warfare suites in combat. My reaction time is much faster than any organic. I collate the records of shipboard monitoring devices for the elusive man. I serve additional functions which are restricted at this time. Restricted functions? Like what? I do not know. Some of my databases are sealed, some of my hardware is kept offline. I assume that when certain unknown conditions are met, those functions will be released to me. Cyber warfare means things like viruses, right? In close-range ship-to-ship combat, I can sometimes break through the firewalls of an enemy's internal wireless network. Once I seize control of their systems, I can turn off gravity or air. I can disable weapons guidance or shields or I can put their fusion plant in meltdown. On the defense, I manage Normandy's own suite of jammers, decoys, and internal firewalls. Sounds incredibly useful. Why is there someone like that on every warship? An organic operator cannot react quickly enough to changing circumstances or perform the necessary multitasking. This is a role that can only be filled by an artificial intelligence. Unfortunately, we are suspect. Well, it might have something to do with how an AI almost destroyed galactic civilization, just putting it out there. The elusive man has monitoring devices on board? He has invested most of Cerberus's resources into the design and construction of this ship. He has an interest in monitoring our progress. Uh, he's spying on us. Let's discuss something else. Ready. I want to know more about the people I'm working with. Much of that data is classified. Do you have a specific inquiry? What sort of resources does Cerberus have? Money, personnel, facilities? 
I have a block that prevents me from answering that question. What do you mean? Although I am less controlled than other AI, I am still subject to behavioral blocks and the physical isolation of my hardware. In this case, I am prevented from truthfully answering your question by Cerberus's levels of secret classification. How was Cerberus organized? Aside from the elusive man, I don't see much chain of command. Cerberus is organized into task-oriented cells. Each operates in isolation. Members from one cell cannot recognize the members of another. Each cell's agents are led by a single operator. We are called the Lazarus Cell, which is directed by Operator Lawson. So how many operations is Cerberus running right now? I have a block that prevents me from answering that question. Hmm. Of course. How did Cerberus replicate the most advanced warship in the Alliance Navy without anyone knowing? I have a block that prevents me from answering that question. Okay. Another topic, I guess. Let's discuss something else. Ready. Hmm. There's no. Ah, of course. What is this room? What's this area of the ship? This is the bridge where the navigator plots our FTL vectors and the helmsman maneuvers the ship. Yeah, sitting right here. Thanks. <laughs> okay, I think that's all. That's all for now. Logging you out, Shepard. Anyone else I can speak with here? Let's see the private terminal. Team status. No team for now. Upgrades, no upgrades, unread messages. Message from Anderson. From Council Anderson. On the off chance that the rumors are true and you actually are alive, I need you to come and talk to me on the Citadel. A lot has changed in the last two years. You put me on the council, and it's only fair that you'll be allowed to speak for yourself about what we've been hearing. Okay. Deal struck with Zaid Masani. From Elusive Man. Shepard. We've reached an agreement with veteran, veteran missionary Zaid Masani. You may know the name. Zaid has been involved in some of the best known and some utterly unknown military operations in the terminus systems. And his fear as a ruthless and relentless bounty hunter. I felt you might need a man with his skills on your mission, so I arranged to have him join you. You will find him on Omega, where he's wrapping up his current bounty. Don't worry about his fee, I've taken care of that personally. Okay, that's all. Lost contact with service ship from Provid Project Firewalk. Commander, the MSV Rosalie, a service ship with Cerberus connections, has gone missing. The service team ha was field testing a new prototype, the Hammerhead Planet Size Exploration Rover. In addition, scientists Dr. Manuel Casey and Dr. Robert Oloy are aboard the MSV Rosalie and conducting research for us. We need you to find the ship. Her survey team and the doctors. The, MS, the MSV Rosalie was last seen near planet Zeona Alista Ismar Frontier. Okay, so we're, we're having our first side missions. Normandy crash site located. From Admiral Hackett, Commander Shepard. Our scans in the Armada system have turned up something we thought you should see the final location of a wreckage of the SSV Normandy. Uh, I, I mean, for, for, okay, Commander Shepard was supposedly dead, and this guy doesn't even say anything about it. Okay. We thought this news might be important to you, but we also have an, until, and we have an ulterior motive. The Alliance would like to honor the Normandy with a monument, to be built on the site of the ship's final resting place. We'd like to invite you to place the monument and be the first to walk on the site. There are still 20 crew members unaccounted for from the attack on the Normandy. If you find any sign of these lost crewmen, we ask that you report to the Alliance so that those hero families might find some closure. Godspeed to you, Commander. Recon Hood. 
from elusive man, Shepard. It occurred to our armor technicians that you may not want to show your face everywhere you go. They send by a hood that service is used to discover operatives. It has additional microframe functions that you might like. The hood is in your quarters. Okay. Overlord. From elusive man, Shepard. One of our cells just went off the grid without explanation. Structured Overlord has been experimenting with highly volatile technology, and I need you to investigate. Their work is extremely compart compartmentalized, enough that I can't divulge operation details over this channel. You'll find them on the planet, planet 80, Typhon system, in the Phoenix ma massing cluster. Please your care and use care in this matter. Arc projector. Lucifer man again. Shepard. We recently had an incident involving the Geth at one of our outposts in the Skillian Verge. Don't worry, I'm not sending you off to change anything down. Our operatives waged a highly successful battle against the Geth scouting party and credited the success to a new advanced electrical attack device that we finally let them take out of the lab. Since their unit is being reassigned for some rest and relaxation, I thought you should take custody of the weapon in the meantime. The weapon is called an arc projector. I sent it to the Normandy Armory so you can examine it, examine it for yourself and use it if you deem it worthy. It's gone through plenty of tests that indicate it overloads, it overloads connecting barriers and synthetic enemies particularly well. But laboratory demonstrations are a poor substitute for actual field reports. We know it works. Now we want to see what it can do in the right hands. If all goes well, we'll use your tactics to train other operatives. When the rendezvous with Kasumi Goto. Elusive man, Shepard. At great cost and effort, we have tracked down the master thief Kasumi Goto and convince her to work with you. Very few people have ever heard of her, and fewer can claim to have seen her in person. She is unequal at stealth and infiltration, and her skills will prove invaluable in your mission. Travel to the care ward on the Citadel. They will find a special air terminal that differs from the usual. Input the password silence is golden to begin the rendezvous. So a lot of those are really new to me. Said, uh, Rika, the Recon Hood, Overlord, Dark Projector, Kasumi, the Normandy Crash. Pretty much all are new to me. So let's mark this as read. Oh! Extension Financial Service, your account. From Stanwick Dobbs, Banking Agent, Ascension Financial Services, Earth. Hello, Commander Shepard. Thank you for submitting your updated medical documentation. Your status has been changed from deceased to alive. After deducting modest, administ modest administration fees for closing the file, the, sus the subsequent change in status and the reactivation of your account, you have a remaining balance of 1,000 credits. Thank you for banking with Ascension Financial Services. We look forward to working with you. Are you protecting your greatest assets? Assets. We will find the best life insurance rates and coverage to fit your needs. Reply for a free quote today. Uh, I mean, this is the the email basically, and uh, I'm sure we'll have we'll have a lot of spam. Anyway, everything here is red. It's market red. We have two new squad members that we can uh, uh, we can recruit and red archive. Yep. Hmm. Welcome aboard, Commander. I'm Yeoman Kelly Chambers. I've been assigned as your administrative assistant. I'll manage your messages and help you monitor the crew. And I must say, it's such an honor to work under you, Commander Shepard. 
I'm glad to have you on the team, Miss Chambers. Please, call me Kelly. Okay, Kelly. Anything else? Do you have a moment to talk? I always have time for you, Commander. What are your responsibilities? I'll keep you notified of any messages or appointments you might have. If any of the crew has important business to discuss, I'll make sure you know. Isn't that the type of task better suited for a VI? Yes, but being your yeoman is just my official role. Unofficially, I observe the crew. Everyone knows how risky our mission is. Many of us may not be coming back. That's a lot of pressure. I have a degree in psychology. I'm good at sensing when people are overly taxed. You make sure the crew's mental health is sound? Yes. I look for warning signs. I listen. It's not a full-time job, and it's most effective when done informally. We're lucky to have someone with your skills, Kelly. Thank you, Shepard. What else would you like to know? This organization has a dark reputation. Do you have any concerns working for them? Not at all. Our methods can be harsh, but Cerberus has noble objectives. We look out for human interests. Advance human technology, save human lives. They're good goals. It sounds like Cerberus wants to dominate all aliens and put humankind on top. Cerberus looks out for humanity, but that doesn't mean we hate aliens. My sister started a dog shelter, but she loved cats too. I love humanity. I also love Asari, Quarian, Turian, Salarian, Hanar. That isn't in conflict with Cerberus' ideals. That's a very positive attitude. What can I say? I'm a people person. Anything else you'd like to talk about? How do you feel about being assigned to the Normandy? I was handpicked by the Elusive Man to help fight the greatest threat known to humanity. How do I feel? Honored, exhilarated, terrified. But mostly I feel encouraged. Under your leadership, we can't fail. Don't worry. We'll defeat the Collectors. I trust you implicitly. The moment I met you, I knew I could close my eyes, fall back, and you'd be there. Uh, already? Or okay, no. No, 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 no. I will not drop her, but... Your trust is well placed, Kelly. I knew it would be. Thank you, Shepard. Anything else you'd like to talk about? I don't think there's anything else, no. I better go. Okay. Maybe we'll talk later. But, uh, actually, I have six, seven reds. You cannot go there. Okay, let's go then to the. Oh, I forgot to ask one thing. How may I help you, Commander? Is there anything I should know? Nothing right now. Anything else, Commander? No. That'll be all. I'll be here if you need anything. Captain's cabin. What's this area of the ship? This is the commanding officer's quarters. It's larger than the quarters of other warships I've served on. This is a Cerberus vessel, not an Alliance warship. Accommodations have been made for personal taste. That said, this space is directly under the exterior pressure hall. The fitting yard workers called it the loft. An aquarium. You can put uh, fish inside, but I'm not uh, that much of a fish guy. This is the same as in the other side. This is trophies. Oh, I don't care about those. Sound system slap music. Ah, uh, I don't think my taste is included. Okay, let's change our pajamas. Uh, the recon hood. Ah, uh, depends. For now, it's the only thing. Ugh, pink. 
Jesus. Eventually, we're gonna change just for change. But for now, we'll keep it that way. Now, casual appearance. Uh, uh, too formal. Too formal. Too Han Solo ish. I don't know why. This, but both of these look nice. But I'm gonna keep this. It's like a. Sweatsuit. I don't dare to change the music. Combat Information Center, close quarters. Wait, no. can change the weapons for the crew members, but for now, let's keep it that way. It was easy. Commander, there hasn't been time to really settle in and take stock. I want to say that working with you is a great opportunity to do something that matters. It's a privilege to serve on the Normandy, Commander. You may change your tune if we end up like the original Normandy. Maybe. As long as the elusive man walks his talk, and you do the same, I'll do my best to make sure we succeed. That's been the condition for my service so far. I have issues with certain actions Cerberus has taken in the past. What has Cerberus done to make you nervous? A lot. They've been called terrorists, and with good reason. Doubt you can find a more checkered past. But if the Collector threat is real, and we do something about it, Cerberus will be remembered differently. Or we'll all be tried and executed. Can't count on people thinking about it as hard as I have. I look forward to working with you, Mr. Taylor. Likewise, Commander. Let me know if you need anything. At least he's honest. If he said something like, ah, Cerberus is just all oh, that fame is just misplaced, that bad rat. What's this area of the ship? This is the FTL communications room. In addition to interfacing with the FTL comm network, Normandy is fitted with a quantum entanglement communicator linked to the elusive man's office. This allows lag-free communication even when you operate off the comm grid. Why aren't these used everywhere? Each quantum pair costs nearly as much as a comm relay and can pass only one quantum bit of data at a time. In addition to the cost and bandwidth issues, the system is strictly point to point. To contact a hundred different worlds, we would need to manufacture and install a hundred entangled pairs, one linked to each world. I've never heard of a quantum entanglement communicator. How does it work? Essentially, two subatomic particles are created in an entangled state. One is installed here, and the other in the elusive man's office. When one particle occupies a given quantum state, its entangled partner will always enter the opposite state no matter the distance between them. If we alter the state of our particle, that alters the state of the elusive man's. This allows us to send data in the form of quantum bits. That's all for now. Logging you out, Shepard. I will pretend that I understood what that meant, but... Okay. It's connected to elusive man. It's like having a phone directed to him. That phone only connects to that other phone. Okay, let's watch. Commander, you've received a new message at your private terminal. Already? Okay. Wait. But there's nothing new.
with me. What's this area of the ship? This is the combat information center. Here, the crew receives sensor data and coordinates gunnery and damage control efforts. While normally is flown from the bridge, during combat, the commanding officer issues orders from the CIC. Okay, let's go to the crew's quarters. Surprise again? Come on, Rupert. I'm sorry, Princess. Filet mignon and caviar coming right up. Let me just get out my doilies. Dead. Commander Shepard, the hero of the Citadel, you did humanity proud that day. Miss Sergeant Rupert Gardner here. How can I be of service? You have everything you need. I make do. But have you ever tried to prepare a decent meal with military provisions? I'm good, but I'm no miracle worker. Taking down the collectors is going to be rough business. The crew deserves a few fine meals before they throw themselves into the fire. What do you need? If I had some quality ingredients... Aw, oh, shit. You've got more to worry about than grocery shopping on the Citadel. Forget I mentioned it. If I head that way, I'll keep an eye out. Much appreciated. Most of this list is probably standard fare for those namby pambies on the Citadel. Anything else you'd like to talk about? What do you do here on the Normandy? What don't I do? Most think of me as the ship's cook, but I'm also the facilities technician and custodian. HVAC, plumbing, non-mission critical electrical, I make sure they're all clean and running. So the man cleaning the toilets is also preparing the meals? I wash my hands, most of the time. This ain't no luxury liner. You have to pull your own weight in a Cerberus vessel, and I catch what falls through the cracks. <laughs> through the cracks. How do you feel about working for Cerberus? Damn proud. Cerberus gets the job done. The Alliance and Council have got their heads buried so deep up their butt puckers they can't see squat. It'll take good old human ingenuity to crush these collector vermin. Only Cerberus knows that. How did you find your way into Cerberus? Can you believe I was once a family man, working the Ezo rigs along the frontier? I was happy enough, but losing everything to Batarian raiders can change your outlook. I needed to make a difference. I'm no soldier, but I've got skills, and Cerberus keeps an eye out for talent. I'll do whatever it takes to help. Be that plumbing a sewer, routing an air duct, or keeping everyone's bellies full. Okay. I won't take any more of your time. Back to work. You're under office. Commander, what can I do for you? You have a minute, Miranda? No doubt you've got a lot of questions. Cerberus isn't as evil as most people believe. If I can help allay any of your concerns, I'd be happy to do so. So, what would you like to know? I know what we're doing here, but what's Cerberus's long-term goal? The advancement of the human race. Nothing more, nothing less. The Salarians have the Special Tasks Group. The Asari have their legendary commandos for stealth and recon operations. Cerberus is humanity's answer to those organizations. But those organizations are regulated by governments. Who keeps Cerberus in check? Nobody. We're privately funded and our backers trust the elusive man to make the right decisions. But he's very clear about our goals. Protect humanity and serve its advancement. Uh, without oversight. That's a good thing. Are you military or political? Or both? Cerberus has several divisions. Political, military, scientific. But we're all working towards the same goal. The teams you encountered before your accident were mostly part of our military division. But not all Cerberus operations use the same protocols. We try not to get bogged down in bureaucracy or formality. What kind of resources does Cerberus have? We're very well funded, though I doubt anyone other than the elusive man knows exactly how well. 
But our resources aren't unlimited. Reviving you and rebuilding the Normandy was a significant investment. And a significant risk. We're all hoping you can do the impossible, Shepard. No pressure. No pressure. What can you tell me about the elusive man? Not much that you don't already know. Even I don't have access to most of his background. And you've seen more of him than most ever do. It's rare for him to become directly involved in missions, but you're something special. Whatever else people might say about him, I can assure you he's got humanity's best interests at heart. That includes you and me. How can you be sure of that if you know so little about him? I didn't get to where I am without knowing how to gauge people's motives and ambitions. Even from brief encounters. He's no saint and he'd be the first to admit it. But he is committed. Humanity couldn't have a better advocate. Tell me about yourself, Miranda. Oh, I guess that's fair. I've spent the last two years learning everything there is to know about you. Well, you should probably know that I've had extensive genetic modification. Not my decision, but I make the most of it. It's one of the reasons the elusive man handpicked me. I'm very good at just about anything I choose to do. What level of genetic modification are we talking about? That's very thorough. Physically, I'm superior in many ways. I heal quickly and I'll likely live half again as long as the average human. My biotic abilities are also very advanced. For a human. Add to that some of the best training and education money can buy and... Well, it's pretty impressive, really. So you're perfect. Sounds like you were designed to be perfect. Maybe. But I'm not. I'm still human, Shepard. I make mistakes like everyone else. And when I do, the consequences are severe. Everyone expects a lot from someone with my... abilities. You certainly don't lack for confidence. It's just a fact. My reflexes, my strength, even my looks, they're all designed to give me an edge. No point in hiding from it. It's the reason <laughs> I'm trusted to oversee the most dangerous, risky, and technically demanding operations Cerberus undertakes. And it's why I was assigned to you. It's my job to make sure you succeed, Shepard. Thanks for the information, Miranda. I'll talk to you later. Of course, Commander. Whatever you need. Does she really believe all of that that she says? That, he's, that she is superior in every way? That's a lot of pressure on the, on the person. Commander Shepard, I watched the Normandy crumble with you on board. It's good to see you alive. I'm shocked. You're serving on a Cerberus vessel now? Surprising, even to me. Yet, here I am. The kind of trauma you endured would have changed most people. But not you, I see. Welcome back, Shepard. Do you have everything you need? I believe so. This medical bay seems very much like the sick bay on the original Normandy. Only thing missing are my private reserves. I even had a bottle of Ceres ice brandy that I was saving for a special occasion. I'll keep an eye out for our replacement bottle. Oh, you needn't. It's expensive, and we have much larger concerns ahead. Doctor, you've been with the Alliance for years. Why leave now? After the Normandy was lost, the surviving crew was reassigned. I was stationed at the Mars Naval Medical Center, a very respectable position, but it wasn't on a starship. Colonial military life isn't for you? I've spent most of my life on warships, never knowing what the next mission might bring. I'm used to the hum of engines, the creaking of bulkheads, that subtle vertigo when the momentum dampeners kick in. Life planet side is just too static, too boring. You're not the Cerberus type, Doctor. I don't work for Cerberus. I work for you. On a mission that may be crucial to the survival of the human race. I have faith that your dealings with Cerberus will be ethical. I trust you, Commander. There's a very good chance this mission will be a one-way trip. Are you prepared for that? I've been through the reclaiming of Shanxi, the Skillian Blitz. We survived the Battle of the Citadel and the destruction of the Normandy together. 
I've lived a full life. No regrets. I'd like to make sure the crew gets the same opportunity. I'll see you later, Doctor. Commander. Okay, this area is closed. Let's go to the other part of the ship. Oh, she's a cutie. How old? Ah, uh, she'll be a year old next month. Oh, you'll miss her first birthday. Well, my family lives in New Canton. Oh, uh, that colony's on the edge of the frontier. Could be vulnerable to collect the men's exactly. restroom. Okay. Okay. Don't stress room. Okay, let's go engineering. What's this area of the ship? Normandy's cargo deck. It includes facilities to rearm and repair Normandy's embarked ground vehicle and shuttle. My last ship didn't need a shuttle. Why do we have one? This ship is nearly twice the mass of the previous Normandy. It is more difficult to land the ship on high gravity worlds. Access to this room is currently restricted. Okay. You came all the way down here to see us? You're speaking to our commanding officer. I'm touring the ship, getting to know my crew. I'm Engineer Ken Donnelly, handling the power control systems. This is Gabby. That's Engineer Gabriella Daniels, actually. I'm responsible for the propulsion systems. What can we do for you, Commander? Are you set up okay down here? We can't complain. I just wish it didn't take so long to calibrate the FBA arrays. The... Kenneth, you're complaining. What kind of problems are you having? When they upgraded the Normandy design, they got a bit sloppy with the FBA couplings. I won't bore you with the tech, but there is an array of attenuators in the primary power transfer system that channels the field bleed. Kenneth, you're boring the commander with tech. In short, if we had T6 FBA couplings installed, it'd save us a lot of maintenance time each day. Why isn't something like that already installed? It's probably just a design oversight. Efficiency isn't affected, it's a maintenance issue. Also, the T6 model can be hard to find. Nash and Stellar Dynamics discontinued them. We could probably find used ones in the Omega markets, but we have no time for shore leave. Where did you receive your training? Both Gabby and I started in the Alliance, serving on the SSV Perugia. She flew in the first wave at the Battle of the Citadel. We saw Sovereign firsthand. Why did you leave the Perugia? After you died, Anderson lost political clout. The Council backslid on the Reaper menace. They discounted Sovereign as an isolated threat, as a single... Which was bullshit. They said your warnings of a greater danger were mistaken or delusional. We lost respect for Alliance leadership. We need to fight the real enemy, and only Cerberus seemed to be doing that. How did you wind up with Cerberus, Ken? Once you were gone, the Alliance brass descended like vultures, tearing apart everything you'd said. I was very public with my defense for you. I didn't hold back. That's an understatement. If Kenneth wasn't such a talented engineer, they'd have court-martialed him for insubordination. But it got me noticed by the elusive man. He made an offer, and here I am. So why did you join, Gabby? Kenneth and I have been partners in crime since we graduated from Tech Academy. When he got the Cerberus offer, I insisted that it include me. He'd fall apart without me. Thanks, Mum. Also, I love engines, and the Normandy is state of the art. When I got the opportunity to work on her, I had to jump. What do you think about Cerberus? Actually, we don't know much about the organization other than the Normandy team. We know our mission and who's in charge. We're off to kick the collectors right in their daddy bags. That's enough for me. Daddy bags. Okay, I think that's all. Area. Well do, Commander. 
I'm amazed Shepard came down to see us. I told you he would. I'm still listening. There's something special about engines. The more exotic, the better. Okay, this is the underground or something. That is all. That is all. Well, I don't think there's anything else to do for now. We'll continue. Go back to the combat information center. Let's see if there's a something new. No, no, no. Well, I guess we will end uh, this video for today. It was just. Uh, knowing about the new Normandy and meeting the new crew. Next time we'll continue with the story. Um, still in the still, I still haven't decided exactly what I'm gonna do first. But then we'll see about that. So I want to thank you for joining me here at Gaming Eight House into this playthrough of Mass Effect Two, and I'll see you next time.